What is up everybody? This is Anthony with VR365. What is going on? Today is Tuesday. It is February 19th. It is now 11.32 a.m. And yes, I'm a little bit late on the draw today. And I got to tell you guys, this will be a shiz show. Yes, it will. Apologies to everybody out there that wanted a nicely prepared show with actual topics and actual information because I don't got it. I've been uh, working on some other stuff all day today. Then I had to give my son a ride. I had to pick him up. I you know, I scheduled this show for 1130 thinking, okay, well, at least I'll have 30 minutes to prepare for today's show, you know, so I can scramble around for 30 minutes and try to find stories and try to find information. And then I got a phone call. I had to pick up my son. And so I barely was able to get him and get back here in time. And no prep. No prep. I mean, you know, maybe like five minutes of prep. So apologies for that. So absolute shiz show incoming. There is no question about it. This will be a shiz show like none other. But let's go ahead and get into the stories of the day. So what is the number one story of the day. The number one story of the day is without question Vario, Vario, I, you know, I honestly don't know how to pronounce this properly. Vario, 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 Viro. Uh, it is the new VR headset that everybody is talking about. So let's go ahead and bounce over to our webby browser. This is their website right here. Varro, Varro, the VR1. Let there be sight. The era of professional VR starts now with VR1, the world's only VR device with human eye resolution, designed for use in complex industries that demand the highest visual fidelity. VR1 also features the most advanced integrating eye tracking technology and is compatible with the most popular professional 3D software tools. And so you got this guy standing here in the middle of Antarctica. He's got some high waters on, no socks, must be cold as F, and a very large headset on his head with a big giant mirror attached to the front of it. Um, yeah, it's for architecture, engineering, and construction for simulation and training, for design. The one thing that you don't see up here is for gaming. This is not really meant for gaming. This is meant as a very, very high-end VR headset for very specific purposes. But if you've got six grand that is burning a hole in your pocket, I imagine that they will take your money. I'm sure they will happily take your money. VR1 is now shipping to 34 countries uh, from Europe across North America. The estimated shipping time for all VR1 orders is 8 to 10 weeks. Please note that Varo, Var, Vario, Vario products are only for business use and purchasing requires a valid company tax registration number. Ah, so I guess it will be a little bit more difficult than normal to get your hands on one of these puppies if you're just a well-heeled individual that has money to burn. What's inside the VR1 box? Well, it comes with the actual headset. You get a link box. You get a power supply unit, three power cables, the standard face mask, a large face mask, cleaning cloth, and you get a USB cable and some display ports and some of that other stuff there. Revolutionary bionic display. See and create details that were previously unseen in virtual reality. Industry leading eye tracking with a sub degree accuracy. You can now use Vareo's integrated eye tracker for interactivity, data collection, and analysis in human eye resolution. Photorealistic virtual workflow. Take your 3D software tools, including Unreal, Unity, Autodesk, blah, 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 to new heights with VR1. What's not in the box? You do not get any base stations, and they are mandatory. Base stations are used for the positional tracking of the headset. If you already have Steam VR 1.0 or 2.0 base stations, your device will work seamlessly with them. If you don't have base stations, you'll need to purchase them separately. 
Steam VR base stations are available at online stores, such as Bestware. We, we recommend using two base stations. VR1 is also compatible with ART tracking. Controllers, these are optional. Controllers are used for interacting with virtual objects. VR1 can be used without controllers, but your VR application might have specific interactions that require using a controller. Guaranteed value with customer success license. Uh, this offers a necessary commercial software and accompanying customer support for your VR1 headset. That is basically just a little uh, deal there. That clarity, that resolution, especially in industrial settings where mistakes cannot be made, can save our customers time, money, and even in certain cases, possibly save lives. Yes, this headset is so effing incredible that it will actually save people's lives. It'll save their actual lives. And if you want to try one of these babies firsthand, they are going to be at the Game Developers Conference. Um, and they're going to be at some of these other places as well. The Augmented World Expo later in San Francisco, Cologne in France, Virginia, all over the place. They're going to be giving demos of this. We can now start to replace physical mock-ups with virtual ones because the technology has finally caught up. That is some people that are in construction. You know, there are people that are in certain industries where this is a game changer because we've been working on VR headsets for a very long time. And even though VR did not take off in the 90s like everybody wanted it to, there was going to be a Sega VR headset. There was going to be an Atari Jaguar VR headset. And none of that happened. And VR kind of died in the early 90s and mid 90s. It didn't actually take off. But if you had hundreds of thousands of dollars, you could still buy relatively high-end VR headsets way back in the days. And the military was using them. Um, other aeronautical companies, you know, people that are involved in design, there were certain use case scenarios where you needed an incredibly high-end VR headset. And so that stuff did happen back in the days. And this really is our first modern day version of a super high-end headset. Of course, the thing about this headset is it basically has a screen within a screen. And I believe there's issues with that. I really believe there would be major, major issues with that. But we'll get into that in just a minute. Let's go ahead and go back. Okay, so it's kind of pronounced like Wario, Vario, Vario, like that. Vario, the Vario. Okay, so basically instead of that J, just pretend it's an I. Vario, VR1. I finally saw chat <laughs> and finally saw how to pronounce this. Okay, now there is a video for this and we might as well check it out, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pump up the volume on this trailer um, for this cool Indiana Jones game that is going to be coming in the near future. Eye of something. I forget what it's called. Eye of the Temple, maybe. Uh, I'm going to pump this up and we're going to go to the Vari Vario, like Wario. We're going to go to the Vario trailer. So let's go ahead and check this out. Here we go, baby. Let there be sight. has reached that level. Uh, as an architect, I was completely shocked at how powerful a tool this is as a step up from everything else that I was experiencing. That clarity, that resolution, uh, especially in industrial settings where mistakes cannot be made and save our customers time, money, and in certain cases, uh, save lives. We are developing the car of the future, and um, to design a virtual reality, we need the high resolution of the Vario device. The 
this high resolution, there is a seamless transfer between the real world and the virtual world. To be a pilot, you need to have perfect vision. It's a value device. It's now possible to see the tiniest things inside your cockpit. It's also possible to see the objects far away at the horizon. That's a new standard in training and simulation. Well, that is the Vario VR1. It is currently available at Walmart. No. <laughs> yeah, that does look pretty cool. I don't know. The headset, like I'm looking at this, this little trailer here, and I will say this is a nice trailer. It, it almost seems like they mix the Matrix with a trailer and then an Audi commercial. And they've got a, not, a lot of uh, interesting people that are talking about this. The headset looks really large to me does it look large to anybody else unless they got a bunch of people with really small heads to put this headset on it looks really big like that mirror reflective part of it looks really huge on these people's heads um, it is a shockingly powerful tool said johnny ribiero developer at saab and uh, no, but yeah, it does look pretty cool. And let's go ahead and bounce over to Road to VR, though, because Road to VR, they've been covering the Vario for quite some time. Let's go ahead and take a trip to the Vario. So we're going to go ahead and bounce back over to our webby browser. This is Road to VR. Vario launches VR1 with retina quality fixed foveated display and eye tracking. Fixed foveated display? Doesn't sound so good to me. Okay, so here's a little comparison shot. You can see, obviously, this is the cockpit of an advanced aircraft. And you can see over here on the left side, that is Vive Pro. It's kind of a, a simulation of what you're going to get with the Vive Pro compared to the Vario. VR1. And you can see, obviously, dramatically sharper. We can clearly read air conditioning. We can clearly read fuel. We can clearly read some of these indicators over here. But you look over there, and it's just a bunch of mush. And you can't really read it very well. Of course, we can scroll down here. Now, this is an exaggerated approximation so it is it is varho not vario okay it is varho not vario we use consonants in finland <laughs> okay varo varo i don't know whatever the hell this thing is called whatever it's called vario wario wario makes it a little bit easier for me because i can just think of wario and say vario but now you're saying var varho i'm gonna say varho all right whatever varho varjo varjo here is an exaggerated approximation of how the ultra sharp focus display fades into the less sharp context display. Now, this is a real problem for me. Like, I don't know if you put this thing on. See, the problem for me is anytime you have something like this where they're using some kind of trick, some kind of elaborate trick where they put it super sharp in the middle of your eye and then all of around, all around it, it's basically like a Vive Pro. And so they're, they're using this elaborate trick. Now, for me, I don't know, the, the average person, you can put this on their head and they're going to be looking all around. They're going to be looking around here and they're going to be looking around there. And they're going to get lost in the experience of it. And they're going to be like, oh, my God, it is beautiful. It is revolutionary. It has changed the game for architecture in Finland. It has completely changed the game. And they're going to be in love with, the, with everything that they're seeing, right? But with me, I'm going to instantly notice, I will instantly notice that there is like a, a difference. I would, I, I, I imagine, you know, I imagine I would instantly notice 
that there is a weirdness that is going on around the periphery. Now, it could be one of these things, like we've talked about it a million times. You get into these experiences, there's a massive screen door, or there is the Vaseline effect that we get so often with a lot of PlayStation VR games. And you get into the game, and after about 10 minutes, you forget about it. You forget about the screen door. You forget about the Vaseline. You forget about the shimmering. You forget about this. You forget about that. And so it's very possible that you could have one of these headsets on, and I would eventually forget about the fact that there's these two differences there. Now, Jim Hall says, having never tried it, how would you know? I know, Jim, because I'm Nostradamus Jr. I know these things. I know these things instinctually. Okay, no, I don't really know. I'm saying that I would expect. I personally... See, the thing is, there's different kinds of people in this world, right? There's different kinds of people in this world. And there's the type of person that you could put them in front of a 4K TV and you put them in front of a 1080p TV and you put them side by side and they don't notice the difference. There's people, they just don't notice these things. And then there's other people that notice every little freaking imperfection. I'm unfortunately in the second group. I wish I was in the first group. Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss as hell. I can't tell you how many times, guys, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've been on the VS, the, the AVS forums and they'll be talking about this TV or this Blu-ray player or this or that. And what they'll talk about is they'll say, well, here's the thing. If you're watching this Blu-ray player, if you notice in the upper red in the upper right corner, you'll see a tiny bit of red banding. If you just look in the corner, look in the very corner, you'll see a tiny bit of red banding that's off in the corner. And it's one of these things where I, I will notice it. I'll hear about it and then I'll, I'll fire up that Blu-ray player and I'll look up in the re in the corner and I'll see the red banding. I'll instantly see it and I will never be able to unsee it. I see these things where there's other people that don't see these things. And I'm not trying to say I'm better. I'm not trying to say I'm better than this other guy. I'd rather be the other guy. I'd rather not see the imperfections personally. Um, you know, it'd be wonderful. I'd rather be the guy that just has a 1080p and notices no difference at all. I would rather be that guy. I'm not that guy. Now, am I saying with absolute certainty that I'm going to get the VR1, I'm going to try it on and I'm going to use it for five minutes and I'm going to instantly notice the difference? Can I say with absolute certainty? No, I cannot. I have not put this on my head. Nostradamus Jr. has not tried this. I can't say with absolute certainty. I can only say with 99.99999% certainty. Okay, no. I'm joking here. Obviously, I'm joking. Now, the other big downside we have, other than the fact that, you know, will people notice this difference? I imagine some people will, some people won't. Besides that, you got an 87 degree field of view, which is kind of bonkers. Also, the focus display, the really high-end display refreshes at 60 hertz while the outer display refreshes at 90 hertz again i think that's another thing that i would personally notice but maybe not maybe not who knows now there is eye tracking what exactly is the eye tracking for is kind of what i want to know like why is the eye tracking with unmatched precision and unmatched accuracy but they're using a fixed foveated display so what do they need the eye tracking for? It's fixed foveated display. It's not moving around. Like wouldn't the eye tracking be necessary if it was like gonna move, if it had actual mechanical, you know, things that's moving the little thing around. So, you know, your eye darts over here to this upper corner, the high end thing moves with you. Like this is a fixed foveated display. What is the eye tracking for? Can somebody explain that to me? I don't understand that. Um, again, I am, you know, I'm Joe Walmart. I'm a slightly more educated Joe Walmart. So somebody explain it to me. What's so great about this eye tracking? Like, what are they using it for when they have the belt in thing that that thing isn't moving? It's staying where it is. What's the eye tracking for? That's my question. Okay, Steam VR tracking 2.0 is belt into the headset. It weighs 905 grams, which sounds a bit heavy. 
on the heavy side. And like I was saying, you know, we saw the video. It looks pretty big. It looks pretty gigantic as far as I can say. They are going to also add some AR pass-through, an AR pass-through add-on for the VR1 sometime later this year. So I don't know. I mean, look, this is all good news. It's all good news in the grand scheme of things because we need to move to a much higher resolution future and any any which way we get there is a great thing. So it's great that this is available. This is awesome. This thing costs six six thousand dollars. I imagine a similar type of a display four or five years ago would probably be a million dollars. And this is now six thousand dollars. So this is an incredible, incredible achievement in terms of what we're talking about here. 60 pixels per degree, that is truly incredible. That is absolutely incredible. That is a game changer. Um, but, you know, so I mean, it's good. It's good that we have this. We are making steps, we are moving forward. And who knows, 10 years from now, 10 years from now, everybody and their mom might be able to have something like this. And the actual, the actual really high resolution area of it might be a lot bigger, it might, it might refresh at 90 hertz instead of 60 hertz, and it might be a lot larger, so you're not going to notice the area around there. You know, it's all good news. This is not meant for consumers. This is absolutely not meant for regular gamers. I wonder, I do wonder, like, what, what Arizona Sunshine and Super Hot and Fallout 4 VR, I really would wonder what those things would look like in this headset. And somebody that just has crazy money to burn should certainly grab one of these and run it through run it through its paces. Palmer Lucky, for example. You know, Palmer Lucky should probably grab this thing and run it through its paces. Okay, so we got a lot of people popping up in chat. Let's go ahead and check out one seat what uh, some of the people in chat are talking about. Jim Hall says, should have never doubted Nostradamus Jr. Yeah, never doubt Nostradamus. He will always be right. Push the button says, Varro is doomed to fail. You can buy six Pimax 8Ks for the same money. It's not doomed to fail at all because it's not going after our market. They're not selling this to regular Joe Schmoes. They're selling this to large corporations. There's large corporations that are back engineering secret alien technology, and they're going to need these things. They're going to need these things to help them back engineer the Zeta Reticulin spacecraft. You know, so Area 51 is probably going to order about 50 of these. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Lockheed Martin, they're going to order about 100 of these puppies. Audi, BMW, you know, Mercedes-Benz, Honda, they're going to be ordering these things. And they're going to be designing the next generation of automobiles and flying cars using these things. So there are people out there that need these, like Bell, Bell Helicopter. You know, you can save a life with this damn thing. There's going to be companies that are ordering these things. So don't worry about that. I don't think it's going to be a disaster at all. Um, they will sell these. There's companies. There's Palmer has probably bought two. One to take apart and one for his collection. Actually, you're probably right about that. Absolutely. Okay, so anyway, that is the Varro VR1. And yeah, it is out there. It's kind of much ado about nothing, to be completely honest, because this really is not a consumer-based product. And why are we spending so much time on it? Well, we're just doing it for the hell of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and bounce over to our next story of the day. And like I said, I really didn't prepare for today's episode. I was unable to prepare for today's episode. But I did grab a couple of minor things. And one of the things I did was... You know, your Oculus Daily Deal, right? We got to cover the Oculus Daily Deal. This is something we've been doing for a little while now, and we're going to continue to bang away on it. And the Daily Deal is something called Nevermind. Nevermind, which I've never heard of. Nevermind. But it's currently going for $10. It is a 50% discount. Normal price is 20 bones. And there is a little over 12 hours. Now, this is an intense experience, y'all. It is intense. So you got to be ready for this. Nevermind is a biofeedback enhanced psychological thriller that takes you into the dark and surreal world within the subconscious minds of psychological trauma victims. As you explore twisted labyrinths and solve the puzzles of the mind, 
An optional biofeedback sensor will monitor your feelings of fear and anxiety with each passing moment. If you let your fears get the best of you, the game becomes harder. Oh, great. This basically sounds like an episode of Black Mirror. You know, it's analyzing your heart rate and how freaking freaked out you are, and then it just makes it that much worse. That's exactly what we need, guys. That's really what we need. But anyway, this was developed. Who is the developer here? The developer is Flying Mollusk. And as you can see, this released way the hell back on October 18th, 2016. This thing has been around for a lengthy period of time. Now, I've never heard of it. Like, I, don't, I may have heard of this briefly, but haven't really followed up on this. Don't really know. It looks super trippy just looking at that little thing right there. But I grabbed a trailer for it. Why not? Now, the trailer I grabbed is really old. But let's go ahead and pop this trailer on. Let's go ahead and check this out and see what this is all about. So I'm going to switch back over here to our standard scene. And I'm going to pump the volume up on this VR1 trailer. And we're going to switch to Nevermind. So let's go ahead and we check this out. developing the car of the future. And um, to design a virtual reality, we need the high resolution of the volume device. Rated M for Mature. Lord, I don't know why this is happening to me. I was the perfect little girl. They have yet to fix us. That's why we're here. I know I'm not alone. I know I can get help if I ask. Okay, so that is Nevermind, and I got to tell you, uh, I never saw this trailer. This is the first time I'm seeing this trailer, and this looks cool. I like this type of stuff. I like when stuff gets really trippy and freaky. Some parts of it kind of remind me a little bit of like Transference, and some of, uh, there's a lot of games that kind of go into this weird, creepy, you know, basically trying to trip you out pretty much is basically what they're doing here. And this actually looks pretty cool, but I just haven't heard much about this. So I would kind of would need to hear from somebody that has actually been in here and try it out. But uh, it actually, this looks like something I'd like to mess around with. If assuming that, 
you know, it actually works good in VR and all of that. Because this trailer is really old. I believe this game works in flat and in VR. And this is like an old trailer from like 2016. And I don't know, like, I don't know exactly. So you got this little thing. See how that thing is in the middle of the screen there? I imagine that would be in the middle of your vision as well as you're going through the experience, kind of this little cursor that's basically stuck on the screen there. Um, but all these visuals, and there's another owl. I'm telling you, owls can be freaky. We got into the subject of owls yesterday when we were talking about um, we were talking about Jason and the Argonauts and Clash of the Titans. Um, but yeah, babies, baby, little, you know, weird little babies hanging on trees. This is definitely something to try to trip you out. And then when they start to get into like all this twisty stuff, that's where I might have a problem in terms of like possible motion sickness. Kind of a little bit of Bioshock. I'm getting a tiny bit of little Bioshockish kind of vibes. Like that looks kind of trippy there. This this definitely looks trippy. So, you know, this game was not on my radar whatsoever. Now it is kind of on my radar. Never mind. So, yeah, never mind, bruh. Never mind. It is available, and it is only 10 bones. It is 50% off. Now, looking at the ratings, we've got 49 ratings. We've got four stars. This is mature as well. Like, this is rated M for mature, so there's probably some, some kind of weird stuff that goes on from a mature standpoint in addition. Um... But yeah, this uh, strong language, sexual themes, blood, use of drugs, violence, partial nudity. Sounds like a sounds like a family treat, you know. It sounds awesome. So that is never mind. Has anybody played this? Does anybody like this? Does anybody recommend this? I'm curious about never mind. But yeah, that is never mind. So that is out there. Uh, let's see. Now, what else do we want to get into? Well. Obviously, one thing I did want to cover today, and, and I asked Steve, Steve Bishop is in chat, and he's kind of talking about Pimax and stuff like that, and I asked Steve, has he played Chroma Gun VR? Because if he had played Chroma Gun VR, I'd tell him to go ahead and Skype in right now, and I could get him on the show, but I want to talk about Chroma Gun VR real quick. So let me go ahead and grab a rando Chroma Gun trailer. Um, while I talk about Chroma Gun VR, this game is available right now as we speak. The developer is Pixel Maniacs. And uh, be more like John. This is a promotional video. Uh, just want to hear the announcer for a second. Hey there. You look like a smart fellow. We need somebody to field test our newest piece of paint technology. This is the Chroma Gun patent pending that you've heard so much about. That you've heard so much about. Yeah, okay, so this is Chroma Gun VR. It is available today on PlayStation VR. And I should actually check and see uh, what is the price for Chroma Gun VR. I haven't checked that yet, so hold on one second. Chroma Gun VR PlayStation. Chroma Gun VR PlayStation. Yeah, let's see how much this puppy's going for. Because, um, let's see, buy now. PSVR required. Yeah, so the Chroma Gun, the VR version, is separate from the flat version. And VR is required. Okay, so let's just switch over to the Webby browser real quick just to see the store page here. You can see that Chroma Gun, Chroma Gun VR, the regular price is 20 bucks, but if you do have PS Plus, you can grab it for $16. The developer is Pixel Maniacs, and it was released today, February 19th. It is available right about now. Now, this price, the $16 price, if you have PlayStation Plus, that will expire on February 26 at 8 a.m. So be aware of that. Um, and uh, that's Chroma Gun VR. So we'll go ahead and go back over here to our standard scene. But yeah, so I played this game about a week ago or so. VR Roundtable, we got a key for this from Pixel Maniacs. We were sent a key, but this game was embargoed. It was embargoed till today. So I couldn't really say much about it. But I do have a Let's Play that is available, so if you guys want to check that out, it is also on the channel. And I played this game for probably about 45 minutes or so. Uh, well, maybe 40 minutes or so. 
And I started at the very beginning level and then started to work my, my way through it. And I got to tell you, I really like this. Like, I think this game is really cool. I think it works very, very well. It is super simple. And the graphics are not mind-blowing by any stretch of the imagination. The graphics are very simple. In fact, I made a comment at one point. You're walking through this facility that everything is happening, right? You're walking through this facility and you look up and there's like these windows that are on the ceiling and it has like blue sky and clouds. And I mentioned that the blue skies and the clouds looked like Dreamcast level graphics. So the this is not a graphical stunner by any stretch of the imagination. It is a straight up puzzle game. This is a puzzle game in VR, but I think it works super well. Now, part of the reason it works so well is I do have an aim controller. I do have the gun and this works perfectly with that. So you're holding your aim controller, you're in the game, you see the gun that adds that extra level of immersion. Now, a couple of people in chat are saying, so Jim Hall says, Chroma Gun does not look appealing. Puzzles seem too simple. Well, if you watched my Let's Play and you're judging it on the puzzles seeming too simple, I started at the very beginning. Like I didn't, I didn't even get like there's different stages, right? Like there's stages and then within stages, there's like eight or nine levels. And so there's like nine or 10 different stages and there's probably like eight or nine levels for each individual stage. I think I was only on the very first stage. So they better be simple. Like it needs to start out very simple. They need to slowly but surely bring you through the game so you kind of have a basis of understanding. You don't want to immediately ramp the difficulty on an extremely high level. You want to start it out nice and slow, very basic. And I appreciate that. I'm glad that that's the way it is. Um, so if you're judging it off of my Let's Play, I never even got to the difficult part, really. Um, Chromadome for me, keep it. That's Techno Glitch. Push the button says, Chroma Gun looks boring to me. Uh, Jim Hall says, let's play, put me to sleep. Well, you know, it is a cure It is a cure for insomnia. Yeah, it is a cure for insomnia. That's part of the reason I did that let's play. Um, Recycled says, Portal VR will, will blow our minds after this game. Chroma Gun's not bad, man. Chroma Gun is solid. I'm a fan of this game. It, it's simple. Graphics are not great. And I'm not saying anybody needs to run out and buy this immediately. I'm not saying like, this is Portal VR. It's available right now, man. Portal VR is here right now. No, what I'm saying is the snarky announcer guy kind of reminds me of Portal a little bit. The sterile environment that you're in kind of reminds me of Portal a little bit. Just the way that you're slowly moving through this facility reminds me of Portal a little bit. It also reminds me quite a bit of the Talos Principle VR. Uh, some of the puzzles, some of the ways that the puzzles work remind me a little bit of the Talos Principle VR. Um, kind of how you have these balls that are moving around. And the chroma gun, the idea, you know, you're using color, you're creating colors, you send these little worker droids, you're moving them around so that you can basically escape the room, so to speak. You're basically trying to get from one room to another. You got to solve whatever the puzzle is, and that's how you move down the line. I had a lot of fun with this. I think this is a cool puzzle game. I'm of the mindset where I believe not not as much as like real time strategy but puzzle games in vr they're kind of a marriage made in heaven i really feel like they are a marriage made in heaven puzzle games in vr just like real time strategy just like horror certain genres really work well in vr and i believe puzzle games is one of those genres and this is a good puzzler it's a solid game it's 20 bucks i would have to pay 20 bucks for this if i didn't have playstation plus I don't have PlayStation Plus, so if I didn't get a key for this, I would have to fork over 20 bucks. Now, am I going to tell my best buddy, dude, buy this immediately. Don't worry about it. It's 20 bucks. Just buy it immediately. This is a must-have game. 
No, I wouldn't say that. But if you're really into puzzle games, you want another game, I would say, yeah, you, you might want to grab this. And I think maybe they should have a demo. I think it would be a great idea if Pixel Maniacs, if they had a short demo of this that would just allow you to go through a few of the basic levels and kind of get a feel for it and then decide whether or not you want the full game. Now, a couple of other people have mentioned, uh, somebody mentioned that they had terrible performance issues with this game, stuttering. Uh, somebody way back here was saying that they were playing Chroma Gun, but they have major, they had major stuttering problems. And you know what? It's weird because I am playing on a PlayStation 4 Pro, and I've played this about three or four times, and I did have some weird little performance issues every once in a while, and then it worked perfectly fine, and then I did have some performance issues, and then it worked perfectly fine, but I've played it a couple of times where from beginning to end, no problem whatsoever. Like, I actually played this game for like 50 minutes, and I did a Let's Play. I was recording a Let's Play, and I did an entire Let's Play, and it was like a 50-minute session that I was in there, and then I got done with it. Everything was done, and then I went to try to copy the video onto my little USB stick because basically I'm recording the Let's Plays on the PlayStation 4 itself. Yes, I know I need to get a capture card. I'll get way better video. I won't have that curved screen and all of that. And it'll look a lot better. And I know that I need to do that. And I need to do it really freaking soon, actually, because I need to also have a separate mic to record my audio because it's just mixing my mic audio with the game audio. And my mic audio was way super loud. The announcer was way too quiet. It was a problem. But I did this entire 50 minute Let's Play and I'm trying to copy it. I wanted to copy it to my thumbstick and the video is corrupted. And I was like, oh my God, now I got to do this all over again. If I want to have a Let's Play, I got to do the whole thing over again. And I did the whole thing over again. But you know what? I didn't really have any stuttering problems that the, the time I redid it and most of the times I played I did not have stuttering problems but I did have stuttering problems a couple of times here and there that did act kind of weird. Main fan says Chroma Gun looks much better in the trailer than in Anthony's Let's Play. Bullshot trailer? No, you know what? It's just internal PlayStation 4. One of the things that you got to understand here is that in the PlayStation 4, when it records internally, it is limited to 720p for PlayStation VR recording. It cannot do beyond 720p. It doesn't matter what you have it set to. If you're recording a PlayStation VR game, it automatically records it in 720p. And this trailer is probably like a 1080p trailer. The game is not, it's not a good looking game. It really isn't. It's not there's nothing about the graphics that are good. This is poor graphically. It's actually a poor game graphically. I compliment the sterile environment that does remind me of Portal, um, of Portal to some degree. But another sterile environment that you can play on PlayStation VR is Static. Like Static, the puzzle game by Tarzier Studios, that has a sterile environment, but it actually looks really good. Like it has a really good looking environment that's sterile. Where this one has a sterile environment, that doesn't look very good. Another example is Spark. Spark by CCP Games, that also kind of reminds me of Portal, not in any other way other than the sterile environment that you're in, and that has better graphics than Chroma Gun. Chroma Gun just doesn't have very good graphics. It's kind of blurry, it's kind of pixelated, it's kind of Vaseline-y, and it's low resolution. This is not a graphical stunner by any stretch of the imagination, but I still had a lot of fun in it. I still enjoyed it. So anyway, everybody can hate on it. That's fine. I like this game. I give a thumbs up to this game. But maybe catch it on sale unless you're like a big time puzzle fan and you really need a game to play. If you got the aim controller, you need another, you want another game that uses your aim controller, you know, maybe grab it for those kinds of reasons. But you don't necessarily need to run out and grab this in a major way. Okay, so where are we at, folks? What I need to do is let's go ahead and bounce back to our webby browser. So here's our webby browser over here. And like I said, I am not prepared for today's episode. I didn't get any stories dialed up. Um, we already did. Never mind. So why don't we go ahead and check out... Actually, we can go ahead and check out like Upload VR, see what the latest news stories are. Let me go ahead and give this a refresh. 
And so let's see, what are they talking about over here? Until You Fall is a VR sword fighter from I Expect You to Die studio. Okay, Shell Games. You know, Shell Games is a pretty solid development studio. And they have a number, number of games. They do have I Expect You to Die. And uh, I think, didn't they also do Water Bears? The Water Bears puzzle game? I thought they did that as well. And so they have a new game called Until You Fall. It's an upcoming VR game. Um, I haven't had a chance to check this out or grab the trailer or anything like that. But yeah, this, I don't know, is there a trailer? Maybe there isn't a trailer. But Until You Fall launches on VR headsets sometime in 2019. From the game's official description, players will be masters of their own martial style and battle corrupted humanoids, monstrous creatures, and unknown horrors. It's focused on single player first, and the game works by showing players where to block incoming attacks. This essentially gives the player the mind of an expert sword fighter. Um, we're blending various styles of sword fighting to create an intense real-time combat experience that hasn't been seen before with VR. Um, that is the CEO, Jesse Shell, and his company is named Shell Games, which is kind of a good name because, you know, Shell Games, da-da-da. Um, so not a bad name there. Uh, Beat Saber and Subpack are helping deaf fans play the game. That's cool. Um, this awesome VR paragliding rig puts you in control. You know, this is a good idea. This is some of the things that I've thought about in terms of a location-based VR center. I think this is a very good idea. We need to come up with ideas where you can be suspended and you can give yourself the feeling that you are paragliding. And, you know, you're suspended and you have kind of a motion rig and stuff. So this is Paraglider VR. Looks like a pretty cool idea. The player doesn't have any contact with the floor. Therefore, we needed to create a great feeling using electronic cylinders and wind turbines to prevent motion sickness. Studio Mui Bridge. Matthew Karen told me over email, we worked with professional paragliders to create realistic flying sensations. But yeah, this looks kind of cool. I'll have to check that out later. Um, we might talk about that tomorrow. Uh, let's see what else is going on over here. Of course, they're going to talk about the Varo. The Varo VR1 shows us virtual reality through high-res lenses. And then Sniper's Ground. Some people have been talking about this. I've seen this on the Vive subreddit and the Oculus subreddit. But you know what? So many times, like, see, here's the thing. If you're a developer and you've got a new game, you're going to do a post on the Vive subreddit. And you're going to do a post on the Oculus subreddit. And you're going to say, hey, here's our new game, man. Sniper's Ground. This is awesome. And you never know if it's like a total amateur hour thing or if it's like if it's a truly legit game that we should be interested in. And I haven't had a chance to check this out, so I don't really know. Um, a possible release date depends on how much funding the developer gets. So they have a Patreon campaign that's up and running. Um, he's hoping to hit 400 a month, which he'd use to pick up a VR headset. Right now he's using a Kinect and the Trinius VR app on an iPhone. Damn, somebody help this guy out and give him a basic headset. Like, how are you going to make a game with... So this is like one indie developer dude. Mohama al Shafari introduced this upcoming game to the world this week. Yeah, so this is an indie, kind of an indie-ass indie game, but I'll check it out. We'll probably report on that tomorrow. Apologies, guys, for the fact that I do not have topics prepared. Magic Leap receives 6,500 applications for grant program, but not everybody is happy. Yeah, they were doing this thing where I think they were going to be giving away some headsets and stuff to try to help out creators and try to, try to jumpstart creators. It says that uh, studios with, with less than 20 members could apply for grants between 20 grand and 500k. At the time, Magic Leap said it would screen applications and decide how much money to provide winners. Successful applicants were also promised free Magic Leap One kits and marketing support, among other benefits. So yeah, a lot of people were talking about this. I heard Noah, Noah was tweeting out about this. They were uh, doing applications for grants. Okay, let's bounce over to Road to VR. Now, of course, they did have this story on the Vario VR1. Let's see if there's anything else. Okay, Project Borg is coming to... Project Porg. Project Borg 
Yeah, see, I'm more, I'm more, uh, I know about Borg. I don't know about Porg. I see, I'm not into these new Star Wars movies. Most of these new Star Wars, Star Wars movies are a straight up embarrassment as far as I'm concerned. Like I've watched a number of these Star Wars movies where I'm watching it for like 25 minutes and I'm like, okay, okay, this is not too bad. Like I watched the new Han Solo movie and I'm watching this new Han Solo movie and for like the first 25 or so minutes of the new Han Solo movie, I was like, okay, not too bad, not too bad. And then I see Homie from The Hunger Games. You know, I see Woody Harrelson in a Star Wars movie. And I'm like, okay, you lost me. You lost me, bro. Don't put Woody Harrelson in a Star Wars movie. I don't care how bad he wants to get into a Star Wars movie. You just broke all, you know, you broke all immersion factor when you put Woody Harrelson in a Star Wars movie. And so that just broke it for me. And then also when Han starts talking in the Chewbaccaian language to the actual Chewbacca guy. It's like, really? Oh my God, they really jumped the shark with that. So I don't know what Project Porg is because I probably, whatever movie these poor guys were in, I didn't watch it long enough to even see them. So I don't know what they are. But I do know that we have this update. Magic Leap and ILM Cross, ILM, ILM X Lab. I can't talk today. Like I literally can't talk announced that Star Wars Project Porg is now free on Magic Leap 1. So it is free, that's one good news. In the experience, C-3PO drops off a baby Porg. Much like an old school Tamagotchi or Neopet, you take care of the Porg. Play fetch, feed it, and help raise baby Porgs too. Yes, there's a laser pointer, and apparently Porgs love them as much as cats. Okay, so that is Project Porg. I'm sure Noah is banging away on that. Don't have much to say on that. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? Um, Final Assault, early access review. What? I thought this wasn't coming out till April. What's going on with this? So I want to check this out real quick, because last I heard, early access release date, February 19th. Um, yeah, but didn't it get delayed again till April or is now, is, is it now coming out on, wait, today is April 19th. Is this game available or did they just miss the, uh, did they miss the update? The fact that this game got delayed till April. Okay. Let's go to the steam page. Let's find out folks. Yeah, no, this is not available. This is not available. looks like road to VR, unfortunately didn't get the update that this is not coming out until April 2019. I will say this though, Final Assault, I am not a RTS guy at all, but this game looks absolutely badass. Like this looks like the army men game that I wish I had when I was a little kid playing with the little green army men and playing with the little tanks and all of that, like in my living room with my buddies and playing army men. That's, that's what this looks like. And you know, real-time strategy, not normally my bag, but I really am highly interested in Final Assault. But as you can see here, April 2019, this originally was, I believe, supposed to come out in the month of February, but this did get delayed. So we're waiting on this. So uh, I was like, whoa, did this come out today? Did I make a mistake here? No, Final Assault is not ready. So that game is still in the oven. It is still baking. Um... But I did they review it? Did Road to VR already review it? I mean, I'm trying to scroll down here to the end. Uh, conclusion: I walked away from the fi from Final Assault feeling that all of the basic ingredients were there to make a truly engrossing and fun game. The addition of a campaign mode, though, which is promised to release sometime between now and its March 2019 launch, will make it much more appealing for players like me who would rather play offline. That said, I'll definitely be playing more on the game's road to launch. Note, this game is in early access, which means the developers... Da, 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 da. Yeah, um, yeah, the game's not available yet. It did get delayed. It's coming out in April, I believe, or somewhere around April. So that is Final Assault. Um, so going back over here to a road to VR, just seeing if there was any other little info that popped up on here. Okay. Why don't we go ahead and quickly check the subreddits? I haven't done that yet. So let's go ahead and hit up the Vive subreddit. Let me give this a nice refresh and see what is going on. What are people talking about over here? And they of course are talking about the Varo VR one headset. Let's see what some of the 
chief comments are here. I'll take 20, Patrick Starr. In all, serious though, in all seriousness, though, I guess it's just cool that different developers are trying different configurations. Honestly, I will be totally satisfied with VR if we can get the form factor down to half of what it is now, 4K per eye, foveated rendering, eye tracking, wireless, and hardware side anti-motion sickness solutions. I don't know about this hardware. Like, we don't need that. We, I don't think we need that. Um, I think the tech is all there for this stuff, but consumer pricing is still five to 10 years out for this level. Okay, that is Mastero Chieftain. And let's go back to, let's go back to, uh, let's see, how do we get back here? I'm just trying to go back to the main page. Whoops. Um, R5. I'm trying to get back to R5. Okay, here we go. Uh, my browser is acting weird. It's not allowing me to move up and down. Okay, here's Sniper's Ground, first official trailer. This is what I'm talking about here. You do got a lot of comments. But see, anybody and their mom can say, hey, I just released this brand new game or it's about to come out. Check out my trailer. And sometimes it's absolute garbage. So I don't even know what to say. Like, I'm not saying that that's the case with this one, but I haven't checked it out. Um... And just seeing if there's anything else, any news that has hit the subreddits, and not seeing much of anything. Okay, let's go ahead and check PSVR subreddit. Usually there's always something on the PSVR subreddit in terms of like a date for some upcoming game. There's usually something that is popping off. Okay, so Apex Construct is celebrating one year on PlayStation VR. Is it just me, guys? Or is Apex Construct always in the news for one reason or another? It's either in the news because it like lowered its price. It's in the news because it came to a new platform. It's in the news because everybody is mistaking it for Apex Legends. It's in the news because it's now had its one year birthday on PSVR. Man, I will tell you what. Fast travel games, these guys are marketing their ass off. Because I can't stop hearing about Apex Construct because of this, that, or the other thing. And you know what? All news is good news. So if it stays on the front of your mind, you know, if it stays, it stays in your awareness, you know about it. And Fast Travel Games is doing an absolute masterful job of this in terms of Apex Construct. Much love there. Okay, Dick Wild 2. It is out today. It is available today. It is out there. Um, you know, Dick Wild 2. I guess it's on Steam and everything, right? Actually, let me go over. Uh, let's see. Did I find a Steam page? I don't. Okay, Final Assault. Here's a Final Assault. This is on Steam. Let's look up Dick Wild 2. I'm assuming. Yeah, so Dick Wild 2 is available on Steam. It is out there today. We have no user reviews yet. I did reach out to Bulvert Games trying to get a code to check this out. I have not heard back from them. Now, Dick Wild 2 is going for 20 bucks, but that's the normal price, but it is 15% off until February 26. It is going for $17. Of course, one of the biggest issues with the very first Dick Wild is that the difficulty was just a little bit out of control. And one of the main things that they did with Dick Wild 2 is they kind of dialed in the difficulty in a much better way. Also, there is co-op. You can play with a friend. There's these new epic bosses. There's insane weapons, etc., etc. So that is Dick Wild 2. I thought the first version was pretty fun, very colorful. I thought it was a pretty good wave shooter. Difficulty was kind of harsh. I didn't play it for a super long time. I just kind of got a a quick little taste of it. I enjoyed the taste that I got, but I didn't get that deep into it. And I think that's where the difficulty just gets totally out of control. But it is out there. It is available. I really like the logo. The logo looks beautiful. I like that logo. And some of these little screenshots look very colorful, bright and cheerful. Looks kind of cool, but I have not actually tried this game. So I do not know if it's any good but it is out there and available. Okay, going back to PlayStation VR subreddit. Um, let's see, Sarriento VR, how to craft your perfect Cyber Ninja. I believe this game is still, they're still targeting like May 3rd or so for this game, but I guess they want to try to keep posting some stuff on this subreddit 
to keep people hyped about it. But last I heard, Sarriento VR was targeting early, very early May for PlayStation VR. Um, we've got some Chroma Gun VR reviews uh, that are popping up. Robinson is down to $29.99. I don't think that's that great of a price, to be honest with you. Um, let's see. How I drastically improved my tracking with lighting. Okay, I haven't heard that before. I haven't heard people... I mean, obviously, you don't want to be in the total dark. You don't want to be in total darkness when playing PSVR. For me, the key for PlayStation VR tracking has always been the placement of the camera and then your background's not having reflections. That's always been the number one thing for me. And I've always told people, like, if you really want accurate PSVR tracking, you have to move your camera whether it's standing or seated, you got to move your camera to different spots, I think, to get really accurate PSVR tracking. I haven't had a problem with lighting, but let's see what this guy's talking about here. I've been having tracking problems both in Firewall with the aim and Beat Saber with the moves for months. Missing blocks and drifting gun that I'm sure many of you have had problems with. I've tried all the suggestions I could find in this sub and on the net. My camera is mounted about 6 to 7 feet high, angled down slightly to show my head and upper body. I've always tried to keep my room as dark as possible. Okay, see, that's where you went wrong. You're not supposed to keep it like pitch you don't want it pitch black you want some ambient light so that's where you went wrong there no reflective surfaces no colorful clothing you're doing too much you're doing too much if you're worried about your clothing and all of that like if you've got to wear specific clothing to give your to get your tracking working right then the tracking is a problem and it needs to be thrown in the trash i don't have all the problems that all these people have with PSVR. Like, I remember when Giant Bomb first got PlayStation VR, they were like, it's broken. PlayStation VR is broken. You know, Jeff Gersman was like, it's broken. PSVR is broken. It's wobbling. It's wobbling. It's, it's going in and out. I never had any, any of the problems that these people had. I did have reflection problems. I was playing Skyrim. And, and I was like this, and I, you know, I had my sword in my hand, and I had my shield in my hand. I was playing Skyrim, and I did have one problem for about two weeks where I'd be playing it, and then my hands would end up over here. But my hands are like this. I'm doing it like this, but my hands are over here. And then I found out there was a picture frame on the wall behind me that my wife had put up that I never noticed that was covered with glass, and it was reflective as F. And that was causing all my problems. But I've never, like other than that, and other than camera placement, like I move it. I move my camera. If I'm sitting down, I have my camera in one spot. If I'm standing up, I have it in another spot. Does it kind of suck to have to move my camera? Sure it does, but I get perfect tracking. I haven't had a problem. Okay, let me go ahead and check over here in chat, see what folks are talking about. Um, Paradise is saying, I had no performance issues on the Pro. I think he's talking about Chroma Gun. Chris says Chroma Gun has a demo on Steam, but it's not VR. Yeah, the VR version of the game, I believe, is exclusive to PlayStation VR at this point in time. Alexander Ritter says, does no one experience the bad FPS in the game? I believe he's talking about Chroma Gun. I've, I've experienced it in fits and starts, but, but um, I've also played it for like 40 minutes straight with no problems whatsoever. So just try, you might want to just try backing out of the game, starting it over. Maybe try turning off your PSVR and turning it back on again. See, sometimes if you put your PSVR into like the rest mode or the sleep mode, Sometimes you'll have weird audio problems. You'll have weird like HDMI handshake problems. I used to have all kinds of weird problems with audio um, with my PS4 Pro. Like I'd have to disable, I'd have to turn off, uh, what do you call it? Not HDMI, but what is it? Um, I can't remember... Uh, I used to turn this, there was a setting that you would have to turn off and then that would fix my audio dropouts. Like I used to have a lot of audio dropouts uh, with my PS4 Pro, but seems like they finally fixed that because I don't seem to have as many problems with that. 
Um, all right, guys. Well, you know what? That's pretty much going to do it. We've been here for about an hour. I know this show is kind of crappy. Definitely not one of my better shows, to be sure. In fact, absolutely not one of my better shows. In fact, maybe one of my crappier shows that I've ever had. But you know what? This stuff does happen. I did want to check out the Oculus subreddit really quick just to see if uh, there was anything major that I missed over there. So let's go ahead and bounce over to the Oculus subreddit real quick. Um, so yeah, they're talking about the Varia, Varho VR1. They're talking about that again. They're talking about Sniper's Ground. A lot of these things I'll probably be talking about tomorrow when I have the trailer. I've checked out the trailer. I have Steam pages and all those kinds of things. Um, so it kind of sucks that I wasn't ready for today. Oh yeah, the history of the future. It is available today, guys, by Blake J. Harris. That is available today. So it is out there. It is available if you want to pick it up. That is a good book. I thought it was pretty good. And also, somebody else made a post that if you have never signed up with audible.com, you know, audible books and all of that, that they give you one free book. Like they start you off with one free book. Somebody, I know I saw a post in here somewhere about if you want to sign up for Audible, you can get that book as your one free book. See, here it is right here. This was posted by Sven Viking. And he says, the history of the future, Oculus, Facebook, and the revolution that swept virtual reality, audiobook released free with trial. So yeah, if you sign up for... Um, if you sign up for Audible, I think you can get this as your free one. Now, hopefully... Hopefully, Blake J. Harris actually gets a little bit of a kickback for that. That would kind of suck if everybody signed up for the free trial. Everybody gets that book as their free trial. They listen to it. They never do anything else. And maybe Audible has some kind of deal with the publisher where the ones that people choose as a free trial do not get payment. That would suck. I wouldn't be the least bit shocked if that was like buried in the contract somewhere. Um. Enter Forever says, just uh, for your information, for people who might care, Audible has better sign-up offers frequently. The offer I got two to three weeks ago included four credits, one of which I used on this book. Still an excellent deal for people who only care about getting this book now. Um, and Sven Viking says, is at the time of this writing, which was two hours ago, the author is currently running an AMA over on uh, r slash books um so yeah uh and there's a foreword by ernest klein and um there's a lot of good information in there very good information so yeah i would definitely that's a pretty good book i i want to read more of it because we got a little bit of a free sample of it we got a bit of a free sample and i definitely want to read the rest of that book um seeing if there's any other little news blurbs that got popped in here Oh, one other thing I could mention, and this goes back to yesterday's show. I mentioned that Scraper First Strike has a new price on the Oculus Rift. It is going for $20, bucks, nineteen ninety nine. They did respond to me in that thread and said that that price would be coming to Steam uh, in, within a couple of weeks. That new price would be coming to Steam, so you will be able to get Scraper for 20 bucks on screen on Steam very soon and they're still working on the PSVR version. So I just wanted to mention that. All right, well, let's go ahead and back to our standard scene and I'm going to get the hell out of here. Uh let me go ahead and grab my outro logo. Yeah, some people didn't like our interview with Blake J Harris. I thought it was pretty good. I thought it, although he answered all of our questions with that's a very good question. That's a very good question. Every little question we threw at him. That's a very good question. I want him to say one time, that is a shitty horrible question. I can't believe you just asked me that question. All right, guys. Well, that is going to go ahead and do it for this particular episode of VR365. Not the greatest episode in the world, but you know what? When you do one of these babies every single day, the law of averages is going to catch up with you. You are going to have a craptacular episode every now and then. And this one was a little bit craptacular. But that does tend to happen. But I need to bounce out of here. I am starting to get starving. I am very hungry. And I'm having problems talking. So I need to bounce out. But I will see you guys later. Have a wonderful uh, 
Tuesday, yeah, I was about to say Monday. No, today is Tuesday. Yesterday was a holiday, kind of threw me off. Have a wonderful Monday. Those of you, wonderful Tuesday. Those of you that have PlayStation VR and you really like puzzle games and you're itching for a new puzzle game, you might want to grab Chroma Gun VR. I think it's pretty freaking sweet. All right, I'm out of here. See you guys tomorrow. Have a good one. Take it easy. Later.